This episode of NSC TV is brought to you by Leonora AA, Bush Rangers Brotherhood, Geelong Firearm Courses, Hunters and Shooters Society of Australia, Auto Scratch, Killsite Outdoor Store, Shooters Union of Australia, and the Ballarat Arms and Military Collector Society. Welcome to another episode of NSC TV and thank you to our Patreon supporters and our sponsors for making this possible. Today we'll take a step away from politics and talk about a topic which we get asked about quite a lot, which is about the protection of firearms from the elements, such as corrosion. We'll speak with Aaron Batty from ARC Armaments about the use of polymer ceramic coatings. I've got Aaron Batty with me from ARC Armaments. How are you doing, Aaron? Good, thank you, Neil. Good. But before we start, just a little bit about you. What's your background and how did you get involved in the business? Um, so uh, I actually uh, started um, work at a uh, powder coat shop um, that happened to have a wet spray uh, booth and such out the back as well uh, when I was about 17. So well, I was exposed to the um, uh, the painting industry uh uh, at a relatively young age so um that that's where my interest uh, initially started and what is ceramic coating what is what is what is this a polymer ceramic coating what does it do so it's an ultra thin um like, like you said a uh, polymer um ceramic coating so uh there's several series of uh paint so um it, it can be uh administered in a, a few different ways um mostly uh, through your spray guns and such. So it ha has to be atomized uh, and sprayed on the same as, uh, for example, like a two-pack paint. So um, once it's sprayed on, it looks like any other wet spray. Um, the difference is it's made up of, a, of two parts. So you have your, your base color and then you have a part B. Uh, it's like a hardener that's added to it. Mm. So um, when the two mixtures are, are mixed in together uh atomized and sprayed on uh it's then uh most of the coatings are heat cured uh however they have actually released a um air curing version as well okay uh, we've got a few examples here which will show uh, people as to what we're talking about and most people would have seen so coating in some form or another they would have seen that um, the camo or different colors uh, on firearms with actually yep. understanding what else uh this this can do in terms of protective qualities but first of all let's just have a look at a couple of examples that you sent me so this is um one gun you i understand you did the blue part of it is that correct yeah yeah so the um the customer had um had already done uh, the wet spray uh fde uh themselves uh but yeah. they wanted to to mix it up a little bit and and change the the black um that was on the um the Ruger there. So um, the, unfortunately, the photos don't do it the real justice. Um, so that particular color was actually a pearlescent base. So in the photos there, you can actually see that they're blue. Um, mm. But when you turned it physically in other lights, um, it actually turned gold as well. So um, yeah, there are those all sorts of effects out there. So they're not just the uh, flat base colors Okay, and with this Remington, um, it, you've, you've covered this in green, and I understand you can pretty much have any colour you want. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. So um, that particular green that you can see there is, um, is a proprietary colour from uh, Accuracy International, uh, known as Sniper Green. So um, there are quite a lot of colours on the market like that, um, like in particular a lot of the proprietary ones like the Magpul FTE, uh vortex um burnt bronze and such which they use on a lot of those scopes um but you also have the ability to actually um mix up uh the colors and and make a, a one-off um if that's what what you want to do and the bolt um there's also in particular another shot here where it probably shows it better the bolts being uh, cerakoted um gold and yeah, not the breech face obviously but uh yeah. so that's um you can do you can do those small components as well yeah so you can actually um uh, just about anything so um 
you won't be able to see it in the photos in particular, but um, all the screws uh, and pins and everything, they're all Cerakoted too, to, to actually fill in and match uh, in the finer details. So um, yeah, that, that burnt bronze there is um, has been quite a popular color. Um, quite a few different manufacturers like Browning uh, and Christian Tsunams, uh, just to name a couple, uh, have actually started using that burnt bronze uh, finish uh, standard on a few of their rifles. Okay, so tell me um, a bit more about what else this does. This provides a level, as in sorry, can actually provides a level of abrasion resistance. So what are the what are the other um, protective qualities of polymer ceramics? Uh, so it provides um, a better sealant in general. So uh, your tra uh, traditional bluing and such um, is actually a form of um, uh, rusting penetrating into the uh, into the metal itself so and that's done in um, like a hot salt bath so mm. the the protective coating itself like bluing is um, obviously a traditional one and uh, it is relatively effective providing that you're able to keep um, oiling uh, all those parts and such uh, the difference with with Cerakote though is is it holds a better seal so the um, the abrasive uh, resistance uh, is a lot higher. Uh, it's able to withstand a little bit more impact and such than uh, the traditional coatings. And you're telling me that in fact there had been a um, there was a video where that you saw where there were two guns that were put out into the elements for a while. Uh, there was a comparison a gun that had been coated and that one that hadn't. Tell us about what the results of that were like. Yeah, so um, the Cerakote guys over in the States, um, just as a, a promotional um, and to, to show the actual capability of, uh, of their coatings, uh, they had two Remington 700s and uh, one was, was coated in Cerakote and the other was the Remington factory uh, parkerizing that they do. And um, they lent the two rifles up against a tree on, on one of the properties that they had. Yeah, so they had the two rifles sitting up against a tree and they had a camera in place um, to capture the time lapse uh, over a 12 month period. And uh, the differences were insane. So the, uh, the Cerakote had held up considerably better than the Parkerizing. It was, um, yeah, with the Parkerizing, it was very obvious of um, that the surface rust had appeared and such as well. Okay. Um, so the way this is applied, this is a, this is, I think it's 24, this is a wet spray, which is then cured either in an oven or by air, um, depending on well, depending on what the, the, the it is, whether we're talking about metal versus wood versus plastic. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So um, so any of your plastics and woods uh, and metal can actually be oven cured as well. Um, however, I've found that um, using the air curing uh, series of paint, it actually gets um, a stronger uh, and more effective uh, adhesion there than, than the actual oven bake. So last year you made some sort of inquiry with the uh, Licensing Regulation Division of Victoria Police to ask them a question about uh, what, whether they felt that seracoding was some activity that uh, needed um, to be approved or somehow regulated. What um, what was the inquiry you made and why did you make it? So um, obviously uh, in this day and age, um, you know, people can be a bit, a little bit sensitive in uh, the firearm side of uh, industry and that. So um, just to cover myself, um, because I was actually still um, an enlisted member of the Australian regular army, um i needed to make sure that um i wasn't going to be crossing any legal lines so um with seraco in particular you know uh, i wasn't at all that familiar uh with the legalities um as to to whether i was going to need um you know a, a dealer's license uh, to be able to conduct that kind of work all right well let me um perhaps say that it's good that you operated out of abundance of caution i think it's always wise to tread carefully um, and yes, I think the police were being quite sensitive because in fact, what they sent you by email was this email. And 
it says that for the information you supplied, you will not need a dealer's license, but if you are doing this activity on a regular basis and you're generating income, you will need a class three dealer's license. So if you then go to the Victorian Firearms Act, this is, I'll just try to blow this up a bit more. This is section 59AA, which defines what carrying on the business of being a firearms dealer is. And you can see quite clearly, we talk, you know, that's capturing, hiring, lending, transferring ownership, offering for sale, possessing for, um, dis, uh, for the purpose of disposing of, acting as agent firearms. Okay, so it's all the transactional stuff, which you're not doing. And they might be hanging the hat on D, which talks about manufacturing or repairing any firearms. So somehow they have viewed seracoding as being, I assume, man, re repairing firearms in somehow. And as you said, it doesn't um, it doesn't talk about finishing products, which is kind of interesting because if you then go to the um, Seracote website, which we've got here, you can see here that there's a whole lot of products that can be Seracoded, including bicycles, Xbox controllers. I think I even, um, there's some engine parts, and I think I even saw a, a sewing machine at one stage that had been Seracoded pink. So if the police are suggesting that Seracoding is a, an activity that can be regulated, then they're casting a very wide net. And what is also interesting is if we go back to the advice they provided, which I've got here, they actually talked about you gauging in the activity on a regular basis and generating income. Nowhere in that definition mm -hmm. that I put up earlier does it talk about engaging as an activity on a regular basis or generating an income. And these are the people who not only advised you, but of course are advising our police minister on what the law does. Yeah. <laughs> Which I'm quite comical, I'm afraid. Yes, yeah. Of, it's to, um yeah, it's uh it, it's certainly um uh very subjective, isn't it? Yeah, I mean and otherwise they're going to get offended with as I said, Xbox controllers and pink sewing machines. Just in terms of your business, um, I have got here uh, a couple of things which I'll put up on the screen. The first is is your Facebook page. If you yep. wish to contact you, this is obviously a good way to, to do it. Um, and oh my gosh, look at that. You've even got a post there of the National Shooting Council at the Ballarat Gun Show. Got a great yep. plug that was for us. So there's your Facebook page. Obviously, people can contact you that way. Uh, and your website is arc-armament.com, which is up on the screen now. And um, you obviously provide other services, but it's here that obviously you've you've got a little bit about your story and and what you you provide. ARC armament, um, obviously in the earlier stages and that, um, but one of the very first things uh, that I decided to do was to sign up um, as an uh, Australian veteran owned business. Uh, so we're very proud to, to actually support um, support those guys uh, in what they do. Uh, so it's really, really beneficial um, and um, to be able to give back and such. I guess for anybody interested in seracoding, um... You know, there's, there's a wide range of designs and colours and, uh, you know, I guess I should pick a uh, pick one that I, I I would like. I could have that on my gun too, couldn't I? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not. Okay. Oh, well. <laughs> I think I'll let that one go. Depending on what they actually want to get done, whether if it's uh, just a simple flat colour, uh, it's usually, uh, you know, two to three days I can have that done. Um, but, you know, if they want something a little bit more complex, uh, like a camo pattern or such, um, you know, I'd, I'd like to give up to a week on that. And there'll be also if there's some disassembly and reassembly required. Yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, depending on, um, you know, for example, a, uh, a simple uh, bolt-action rifle, you know, that, that's a relatively quick turnaround for me. 
um, but uh, something that's got a lot more moving parts, uh, like a lever action or something, you know, that's, um, that takes me a little bit longer. And, and depending on uh, what parts I'm actually doing, whether it's, you know, just the barrel or the action and, and such, you know. Okay. So if anybody's got any inquiries about, um, about your service, um, they can contact you to your, your website and email address, which are on the screen now. So yep. I think with that, Aaron, thank you very much for your time today. Yeah, you thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me on, Neil. No problem. Speak soon. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of NSC TV. And don't forget to share this with your friends and subscribe to our YouTube channel now. We'll be back with more politics very soon. We'll see you later.